studies are a staple for most churches, but University Christian Ministry at Northwestern University took a little different approach. It brought together younger and older adults during Lent for a faith formation exercise based on the book Embracing an Adult Faith by Marcus Borg. We welcome Juliana Nunez, a journalism major at Northwestern, who has been attending University Christian Ministry for three years. We also welcome Kate Wickham, a member of First United Methodist Church in Evanston. Juliana, what were you hoping to gain from an intergenerational Bible study? Well, I think we were all trying to obtain a better understanding of how each generation uh, sees their faith. If, for example, our, the older generation, our parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, have an idea of how we live, and we ourselves have an idea of how our parents, grandparents, and grandparents live. But it's important to focus on the things in our faith that we find community in, but we also had the same questions as well. And, we, and our approaches and our experiences in life have shaped our answers to the questions we have. I was the one that was supporting this idea in our board of directors for University Christian Ministries. And I really wanted the opportunity to talk to current students on campus so that we could actually talk about things that mattered to us instead of making decisions about people that we didn't know very well because we are all working as Christians in this organization, some of us as board members and the students as actual participants. And I really wanted an opportunity where we could exchange ideas and just see if there was something that in fact would surprise us. And I think as I think back over our time together, um, it wasn't anything specific, but it was the general strength of students' actual faith and belief. The fact that they could sit and speak very coherently and very eloquently about what they believed. And I think as elders, we tend to lose sight of that. I mean, we don't sit and have intentional conversations with people that are considerably different from us in age. Uh, and I think we need as much diversity in age as we need other kinds of diversity. Juliana, was there anything in particular that was interesting to you or that shocked you in this interaction with an older generation? Well, what interested me the most is the fact that we never stop questioning our belief in God. It's, it doesn't necessarily become like our doubt, but we never stop wondering and wanting to explore different faiths, how uh, different denominations, how we all approach our religion or our faith in God. And that was the most interesting thing, because when I first found out it was an intergenerational thing, it's like, well, okay, is it going to be an us and them type of situation? And it never became that. It became more, was focused on the questions and how our experience has shaped our answers to those questions. Have you found that different gener generations approach their faith in different manners? No, I, I don't really think so. And I think going through the study together for four weeks helped me realize that. And it's just what Julie just said. We all still have the same questions, that it's, it's a journey. It's a path. And that we're all on it together. We may be on it in slightly different places, but the questions don't really change. Um, our, our basic approach to who is God and why are we trying to find God, those questions are constant and they're with us our whole lives. That's great. So tell us about the book that you guys used. Right, well we've uh, read the book Embracing the Adult Faith by Marcus Borg. We watched his video series as, so we would use his, the questions he would ask in that video series, his discussion of those questions. And then we would switch, switch it to us, like what do we think of what he just said? And that kind of was the, where our, all our discussions were stemmed from and eventually became we built up onto that. So I think we all had varying opinions of Marcus Borg. And it never became a, a idea of do we disagree, how much do we disagree with him, or do we agree, how much do we agree with him. It's more seeing his interpretation as another interpretation of faith. Not necessarily is he wrong or right, but sort of a, a cornerstone to work our discussion off of. And what was the benefit of having a multiple generations in on that discussion? I am particularly fond of college students. I've made my career doing that. I've worked on campuses for um, my whole adult life. And I am always humbled and awed and um, energized by listening to students who are in college because 
they see things through a lens that has long since gotten cloudy and old and used up. <laughs> and so for me, so it's like I have cataracts. And so it's just always refreshing to have students speak. And this time I think it was especially so because that group has some very eloquent people that have done some very deep thinking about what their faith is and why they, and they could support that faith with their reasoning. And it was just, to me, it was utterly fascinating. I could just sit and listen to that for hours. <laughs> Did you see the Easter story differently after this study? In a way, yes. Simply because I think every generation when we're at this age, it's sort of us, us, us. <laughs> and we look at the older generation across time. And it's just, well, that was then, this is now. And approaching the Easter story, I was like, well, no, this is something that's kind of universal. Like my appreciation for it, it can be a universal and something, we had the same questions, we had the same thoughts about it. And so it was like the Easter story, I got to spend it with my family this time, because normally I spend it on campus, but we happen to be on break. And so my family's multiple generations, so we, it was just kind of interesting how we approached the Lent story in an intergenerational way, and I got to celebrate Easter in an intergenerational way, and kind of appreciating what people have to say about the Easter story and about their faith in general. Were you able to approach the intergenerational aspect of your family differently after this Bible study? Well, I don't blow off what they say so much anymore. <laughs> I still do, but not as much. Uh, but seriously, though, uh, it, they, everyone has some, some kind of wisdom, I think. And it's important to hear what people have to say, not, not just in faith, but across the board. And kind of this intergenerational discussion kind of taught me to appreciate what other people have to say it's too easy to brush off. Well, they're just, they don't know what it's like these days. And that's not necessarily true. They had similar struggles and similar doubts, and both in faith and life. And we can learn from them. It doesn't necessarily mean we're not the stone answer to everything, but I do take comfort in the fact that I am not the only one who has ever gone through some of these doubts and some of these mm -hmm. problems. It's something that many people have experienced, and they've all learned something different from them. What do you think has maybe inhibited or been a challenge to other intergenerational studies or discussions? Well, I think Julie sort of alluded to that. You know, it's not comfortable. I mean, we're, we're very different. We have our things that we're interested in and students have things that they're interested in. Mm -hmm. And again, faith is not something, you don't often even talk to people of your own age group about those questions. I mean, you, you have to set up a very purposeful situation where you're sitting and talking about, you know, what do you think about God? Who is God? Well, I mean, what, what is that concept? I mean, you don't normally have the experience of having that conversation. So to, to make ourselves sit there and do that was a mental and spiritual experience. It was kind of a personal challenge on my level as well, because I was not, I did not grow up in a family where I could just approach my grandparents or someone like that and discuss God and stuff. Partially because there was a language barrier. It's like mm. they only understand about 40% of what I said. So it was not really a discussion based relationship. And I am very much a 20 year old in my habits and my thought process. I am very, I can be very naive about some things. So I was kind of cautious. I'm like, and I was leading it as well. I was like, are they just going to think I'm a dumb kid who is, doesn't really have a grasp on her faith just because it's only, what, like 15 years old <laughs> kind of faith. And, but I'm really happy I did. And it kind of really, like I said, changed my perception of how I can discuss my faith, not just with my peers, but with people across generations. Thank you, Juliana, and thank you, Kate. This has been an interesting discussion and a great insight on this whole idea of intergenerational talks, discussions, and Bible studies. I really appreciate everything that you guys had to say. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm Leah Smith for Different Drummers and the Greater Chicago Broadcast Ministries. Keep the faith. <laughs>